on, on topics like, uh, you know, like uh, psychedelics or DMT or things like that. Honestly, like sometimes when you like go on those uh, experience, right? Yeah, the psychedelics experience, they can also get really overwhelming. Of course they uh, can. Yeah, right? And they just feel the same in a way. It's like life gets overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> Too much information, too much perception, too much, yeah, too much, well, too much of everything. But you know, yeah, I mean, I, I'm just writing. <laughs> I'm getting right to the point right away. I kept yeah. like since we want to we want to chat about like uh, let's say DMT or whatever else. But I keep in my life going to the same vision that for me it's not like it's always this, it's always the same vision. It's always the same. Uh, it's not the same uh, vision. It's the same. It's the same experience of uh, uh, overload and then passing to nothing. Mm. Going, it's a, it's just like a mix of like overload uh, into like uh, shapes and tunnels and all this stuff, and then you're just sucked out and you have this feeling of nothing can be explained anyway. It's, it's got no meaning. And uh, it's paradoxical, yeah. And I feel the same way, like, you know, like I'm on a computer doing something and then I eat a little bit and I have some more like uh, going on in the stomach. And now it's just like I do the rest. I go rest. And then I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's, just, it's the same thing as DMT. It's just like, oh, yes. <laughs> you're, you're back where you started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think like when Rocky mentions in that live zoom we had she just suddenly she mentioned about parallel she mentioned parallel universes or parallel worlds or parallel dimensions i don't know how she phrased it but i was like oh there's a topic there can we just can we just stop there and go there for a moment because i find that so interesting the but in what way yeah go ahead. no i just mean i just mean like the fact that she's on her particular path too like um how, how uh, that's why i wanted to talk to her because to, to to understand like is she is she trying to go there with her breath or going there just with her diet or is she going there to, uh, yeah for what reason or for what what exploration i don't know I, I just found that interesting how how why she's doing that but for me i was thinking like i think it's just part of her transition anyway do you know it's like that elimination of so many things in your life the diet the distraction, all this sort of stuff. It's like, I think her body's just, and her mind's going there naturally. Do you know what I mean? Huh. Yeah. Like the fact that, you know, the fact that she's been on no solid foods for such a long time, like you can imagine what's happening in her stomach and happening in her digestive system. And then you think about like how DMT works. I mean, the body's creating DMT all the time. Mm. But the problem is that the stomach digests it and doesn't allow us to access it properly. So can you think about what dieting and detoxing and fasting were doing is like, maybe her body is automatically enabling her to access DMT just by her transition. I think in a very subtle way, but no, it's not, no, no, not subtle. Um, it's no, it's Finding that with her breath and her like prana work and all this sort of stuff. I was like, you know, that's. But that's full on, in my opinion. It's just like, uh, I think when I was like, I did, I think the max I did was like five, six days of dry fasting. And it's like, uh, I think the b beginning of dry fasting uh, gets you onto the, uh, the breatharian journey. More for, for, I, mean, I don't want to say for a lot of people, but. For the people who are doing it for like a healing or a spiritual purpose, eventually dry fasting gets you to really like kind of like question like everything about food. Yeah. Uh, but then you have the people who are doing like more for competition and like, oh, look, I have done a uh, six days and a half. Wow, super. <laughs> but that's nothing to do with that. But like once you're like on the, let's say a spiritual journey like her, I think when there's a whole phase of detox. And you struggle for that phase. Like that's, uh, everybody has uh, so much like uh, vibrations that are like conflicting that everything has to like realign itself for you to kind of like kept, like receive uh, new types of vibrations, let's say, but sure. it, 
it's still the same vibration. It's just like you can perceive them moving uh, as opposed to when you're like completely like uh, into your stomach, you're not able to perceive the, the vibrations moving around. Yeah, sure. That's how, that's how I see it. But after you pass the phase of detox, like after your body has really been, let's say realigning or rewiring some vibrations, it comes a point where, uh, and I, I, I hope, I think this is where she's at. You're so light in a mm. way. Yeah. That, uh, you're just like receptive to everything. That's it. I totally agree. Yeah. I just, I find her story fascinating and I just, yeah. <laughs> I don't know many people who are on that path. And I'm just, when I talk to people about her, they're like, what, what, really? How is it possible? People are so, they're like, they don't believe me. They're like, no, that's not true. That's not possible. But I think it automatically creates something in their mind. Like, actually, maybe, it, you know, like, oh, wow, it actually probably is possible. Like the possibility to not have solid foods for two and a half years. And she looks amazing. Do you know, like she's with this amazing energy when she speaks to you, like she's just like floating off the planet. Well, I mean, what, have you ever like, number one, like, you know, all the psychedelics, usually everybody does it without food. Yes, uh, of so course, they're, yeah, they're, they're so they're so interwoven. Even like you know when you're when you work with ayahuasca, it's like yeah. you spend so much of the time detoxing and yeah. like dieting. your body so much. It's like more more of that than the actual ceremonies. You know, it's like spending a month detoxing and purging and and dieting, but then you do like one ceremony or something. It's like to get access you know that's what we, it's kind of all about access isn't it it's like yeah but i would say that once you're like in that uh, fasting thing you don't necessarily have the vision um that you would get with those plants like i think no. those plants really have like they're real poison in a way yeah it's like yeah, combo yeah, yeah. you know combo you did combo yeah, it, it really is poison. We just, yeah, like mushrooms, it's poison too, but we just, uh, we like it because we just like, uh, it, it, it's not like, you know, but DMT is the same thing. Like, honestly, you, you've really come so close to, you, you feel as though you're dying uh, yeah. in the most beautiful way to say, but uh, it's still an experience, but, mm. but yeah, I wasn't, I don't know what I was going to say, but like, once you're like in that, in those states, I think you start realizing also that food is just like the same thing as the wall or the same <laughs> thing as the window or the, or the ground. You know, it's not like, it's not because you're gonna put food in this that. Uh, yeah, it's just substance, it's just material. Yeah. It's everything that constitutes everything else. It's just, it's in a particular form we put it in our mouth. <laughs> Yeah, and that's creating the suffering. Right? That's creating the, the... This is quite interesting because in, in this reality, you know, like when we're not like under psychedelics, we eat, we tend to see a lot of suffering. But when we're under psychedelics, automatically the suffering is just transcending into, into something else. I could yeah, be... Because I'm, I mean, my, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. Do you know mind. what I mean? Yeah. So it's really a belief thing too. You mean like when we experience psychedelics, we're not suffering because the concept of suffering and that part yeah. of the brain is, is attached to the idea of suffering or whatever it is, is not there anymore. Yeah, that's it. Yes, 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 that's it. It's just like you are not there anymore. Like yeah. there is no you at all. As soon as you oh. take the psychedelics, you're gone. Yeah, uh, and so but, when, you, when you get this out, so I think when you're on the breatharian path, you it's just like fasting. I think you may you've done the dry fast one day. Like honestly, you should try to do it three days because it's just wonderful. After two or three days, you I, I realize. Felt like I, I feel like I could have. It was like well, well, you know, twenty four hours, okay, but I could have actually gone longer. I didn't feel hungry. I didn't feel thirsty, and I was like really motivated to do more practices so i feel like i definitely could um it's it's, it's unusual like directly afterwards you know 
I'm always aware of things that I eat and I'm quite conscious of most things all the time, but just going to the garden and be like, and picking something, I'm like, yeah. am I, do I have the right to pick it? Do you know, like, <laughs> should I just take a moment and be grateful? I'm like, oh, I should thank the plant well, or I should thank myself or thank the universe. It's like, I'm just going to be really grateful for a moment, pick it. And then just, you know, even just the action of taking something was like, oh, am I, should I, should I take it? When you eat, I, you know, I realize this too. This is quite important because, you know, when we're doing transition in diets, usually we're just trying to be better, you know, so either toward ourselves or toward the environment uh, or to get to a pure state. But like anything that uses the teeth is destruction. It dissects things, it's cutting things, it's killing things. As soon as you put the salad in your mouth, you are dissecting it, destroying it, you're killing it. And you're breaking it up so you can. Exactly. So you're still killing. You know what I mean? When Buddhism is just like, uh, you should not kill. Honestly, you are killing as soon as you're eating food. Yeah. And the fact that we need to <laughs> kind of chew it and destruct it and to break it down just so we can consume it at all well this is great why can't you just look at it and appreciate it all? well that's, <laughs> that's the bread there yeah yeah no, that's really fascinating about it. it's like you know and i was reading something about you know sun gazing too how it can also you know it's almost oh, yeah. like a, a somatic thing like how it can decalcify your you know pineal and all this sort of stuff and well i wouldn't use even this decalcify because this is just like no. a concept but like you know i was like uh, there was a feeling of me like i was just like smoking a little bit and then i was uh, eating bad food for a while just for two days or whatever and then i was like fasting and then i was like okay i'm just gonna sun gaze really for a little while but after you do so much like you know like weird things and like you know whatever you call it it's a belief still and then you just sun gaze as soon as you sun gaze, it's just crazy how if you have done, if you for me, it was this way. If I have believed myself to be eating wrongly based on my standards, as soon as I was looking at the sun, it's just like the sun was way more nourishing me and like rewiring things than usual. Mm. And if you just sun gaze every day, eventually it's the same thing. You won't notice how much nourishment you're getting from the sun because you're just being used to it so very crazy you know what i mean it's just like any drugs it's just like well, i think and then eventually we, yeah but there's something about the, i mean you see people like ah oh, the sun is, it feels so nice or suddenly the sun comes out or you know how nice it is to walk in the sun or we feel good when the sun is there we feel and we feel not so good when it's not there it's like when you sit with intention, like we talked talk about intention, that's so really important. When you sit with intention and gaze at the sun and take it in, it's like there's, there's a possibility for more, I guess. There's something happening in the brain too, allowing you to take it in even more. Maybe. Yeah, but I, yeah. But I just go back to the DMT for me because it's just like, Oh. For me, the sun is very close to the experience that I've had with DMT in a way because I think it's also because I'm uh, me up, you know, and I don't, I don't see, I see everything blur. Like I don't really see everything like so clear. So maybe it just created realization in me. But when I look at the sun or when I look at a light, I really see like um, like some kind of purplish uh, light and like kind of like rays and atoms. And it really reminds me of this, uh, almost a tunnel situation, this idea, this belief of a tunnel idea and, uh, and being, being nourished in a way by this, uh, uh -huh. these rays. And uh, it, it's just so trippy in a way, it's sometimes actually to some gaze. I don't know if you've done it, but eventually the, like after like the 20 minutes of it, uh you really start like you could i don't know for me it was like that, that way sometimes but you feel you know, like this do you feel like everything is just like it's like you're back in gmt it's just like wow okay like the whole like the grass and everything is just like you you mm. just see how it's like uh okay uh <laughs> there's nothing real <laughs> it's so cool i love it <laughs> do you feel like when you sun gaze like there's a tunnel between you and the sun like you, you feel like you're in part of this this form 
there is no more forms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's like. Uh, Do you find it more beneficial, like in the morning or the on the afternoon? I liked or actually the sunset, uh, oh, no. but uh, but the sunrise is really nice too. But it really depends also where you are because sometimes you cannot see one or the other. Yeah, it's, it's to doing the, it's here. It's easier because the sun goes right down over the hills over here. But in the morning, you can't see it at all. So. Yeah. Yeah, at night I feel like it's nice. Uh, I had most effect actually also at night. Hmm. But you know, like uh, the I think recently, like mostly with like uh, my it's not an understanding, but like the the non duality concept. I'm like really grasping. No, it's not grasping. You can't say grasping. <laughs> but uh, the 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 DMT really, I think, is one thing that changed, uh, helped, helped, participated in questioning. And uh, yeah. but but now it's like with with the non-dual. Uh, 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 teachings it's not a teaching either because there's nothing to learn uh, I, I'm, I'm getting to like really it's not like we're living in DMT but we are in DMT all the time so we don't have to look for it I totally agree but that's what I mean it's just like, like right now what's happening is just total empty just moving and speaking of itself but this is quite wonderful <laughs> I know. Uh, um, I, I totally agree. I think we are DMT just manifesting itself. But, yeah. um, and uh, what is it that we're looking for that's different than uh, than this? Yeah. Really. So many practices that try and fill yourself up or try and see beyond this or try and it's, it's like when you bring it, strip it down, I think this is it. <laughs> yeah. And there's no meaning. Like for me, every time I go, let's say you take the DMT, if you take the drug, eventually, I don't know if that was a thing for you, but for, for me, it was clear. I was trying to like hold the shapes. I was like, I want to remember like what I'm seeing right now. I need to remember. But then eventually it comes a point where it's just like, no, no, you, you think you're going to, but I know it's over. It's over. And then, and then all of it is just like, um, no purpose at all there's no meaning yeah. there's n but at the same time you have the impression that you understood something but you didn't understand anything and uh, yeah that's, that's what's happening now <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah there is a sense of like i like yeah i've been here before or i understand something or i'm going back to something or why does it feel so familiar and why is it so life-changing those experiences <laughs> no this is true. so cool that you said it's it's this is great because i used to say that too like yeah it's more real than reality <laughs> because it's just, it, it feels familiar well duh because there's nothing happening here <laughs> You know what I mean? It's just the weirdest thing. It's just like we really believe that something is happening. Yeah. So we, we, because yeah, we, we believe, we believe it. We uh, put so much meaning into this life too. So much effort. So much intention. So much. So much goals. And there's no goals. Ugh. But have yeah. your goals? Have you got goals for what? To, to for what? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, but there is something empowering about that experience, and uh, and I know it's I know it's very changing, and it shifts the the way we see so many things afterwards. Um, <clears throat> well, I think we start like not, yeah, seeing them. I don't know if we're seeing them after that. Like oh. I feel I, for me, it's maybe I just have done too much of it and it's over. But <laughs> for me, it was not. Uh, it was really clear that I was not seeing right before and after that i was like okay i don't know what i'm seeing anymore <laughs> so i don't really know more it's not like i've learned something from it that's what uh -huh. i mean if anything i have lost everything 
<laughs> that's that's exactly what's happening it's like honestly i honestly even the more i've been on this spiritual path now i'm not seeing i don't know if this uh, comes across enough but i'm not really seeking anything anymore it's just like i'm i'm over it i've done sufficient uh bullshit seeking to realize that okay there is just no meaning to anything no, and there's, I feel there's so much pressure for, and there's so much, you know, searching and searching and searching and for, for what actually? For that, for where we are. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. We're fucking chipping out. It's great. It's just like love, you know, like someone that's, so I watched a movie last night and I was like, oh, that's so cute. Like, you know, in the movies, they just put like love scene and everything. And now I don't see the thing the same way. So when I see love scene, for me, it's just like uh, it's just like you know, there's one human that 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 believes that love is only possible with another human, and they have to kiss to to become one. And I'm yeah. like, oh, this is so wrong. This is so <laughs> wrong. It's like there's a wrong thing here. It's just like they just keep people keep feeling itself like it's they're separate from everything. Yeah. Like if you and then that's what, uh, looking for love, bam, yeah, yeah. it's everywhere. Yeah. I think that's what's most valuable about those non-dual experiences is you don't feel like the, the divide is gone. You know, that separation between me, you, you, the rest of the world's gone. Yeah. My first experience was like that. It was almost like, oh, this is it. This is it. This is what? This is what? <laughs> like, this is it. This, I don't know. And it's paradoxical because you can't explain it into words. We have so, so little words to communicate it. Huh. I mean, I think I know all psychedelics kind of take us to a similar place, I think. You think about what they're all doing in the brain, they're all doing a similar thing. When you break it down, understand it. Well, I think having a few beers would do the same thing yeah like, what i mean by that is just like uh it is just an an, an impression it's like psychedelics or meditation it just is it's an impression that uh that you got a glimpse of something but uh i had a car accident and my car accident gave me a glimpse of something i yeah. thought i saw my life like just like running in front of me when was and, that? Uh, I was like, I was 19. So it's just like okay. a while ago. But, you know, someone that has a cancer, same thing. Or someone that's just drinking, like, I don't know, like six beers and just backing out or whatever. I feel like there's a lot of experiences that can get you that glimpse to nothing. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, the, the psychedelics, maybe they're, they have a... If they're, they're close to that they're so poisoned that this is what it is you get and then you realize that you cannot die really well that depends <laughs> but for me it's like i have i have realized in so many ways that you cannot die that i'm just like okay whatever like i had a car accident i had the hiv i had uh, what else the dmt i was disappearing as like for me now today like this is what i meant to say just a little earlier is like, like with the love scene you know like everybody keeps searching for something you know and i look at the youtube feed sometimes and i'm like ah. when you're no longer seeking enlightenment and you know there is only enlightenment everywhere yeah. it's just already free everything is free it's like wild it's nuts you know and uh, and then i look at the youtube and it's like you're not free you need to look for that and it's all that every video is just try this you're try not that. free <laughs> Oh, it's like so sad. It's just, it becomes, it's like I lost something. Like I said, I'm, I lost interest, really. But at the same time, I'm one with everything because it's yeah, just. Yeah, I, I uh... totally agree. I totally agree. <laughs> Is this something we wish to other people, really? <laughs> Because, you know, like, even there's this project, like, I'm like, 
I, I wrote like some stuff on like a group or like a, Buddh a Buddhist group and I was trying to be, you know, as frank as I, as honest, but a little bit of loving. But as soon as, uh, and then a few comments got deleted that I posted uh, because basically I was just not saying what they wanted to hear. Hmm. And uh, yeah, I am always in this, uh, uh, the mess this message does not fit with many <laughs> and it's just like I, I have to 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 make people believe the there's something to find in order for communication to happen oh. what were you posting uh, someone that was just like a uh, grieving or some someone that passed or that died or whatever and I was just trying to express how you, there is no one that's feeling any emotion, so there is no need to pretend you're feeling anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that that I said exactly, but it's like, uh, yeah, there is no center where the emotions are felt. Like, yes, there is emotions, obviously there's grieving, but there's no one feeling them. Mm. So when you're trying to say, let me transcend or let me control the emotions like how you're going to do that you just can't do it because there is no you <laughs> everybody is just trying to like you know control things it's just like ah let me con let me let me rewind let me think reconcile what happened yeah but it's just it's just like you're trying to make meaning out of a dmt experience it's impossible also, yeah yeah it is impossible oh it's possible but it's not, it's got no meaning. It's got, it's got no purpose. It's like useless. Life is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, sometimes I feel, I, I feel like it could be negative too to like be sharing this kind of ideal message. But, but I, at the same time, I have this reflection of like myself, like right now with this, camera and this myself not the stuff but like the, the environment around and the people and it does seems like okay it, it seems a little bit more free and joyful so i feel like yeah it's not that negative no. but it is it is a real suicide too you know sometimes i think about it i'm like yeah the ego is completely dead it is dead for you i don't know but like I mean, it appears, but it's not a thing. It's just, yeah, okay. <laughs> it's a thought, you know, it's like, okay. Yeah. Well, how's yours experience? How's your DMT life? <laughs> how's, your, how's your life? That's my DMT re regular regime. Um, yeah, I, I, find, I think I find more and more that just every moment, every day, every every practice, every little bit of sun coming through the window. <laughs> I don't think about the ego too. I think it's, of course it's there. It, it exists. It tries to construct things. It tries to understand things, but I don't, I don't really find the desire to have goals either. People, people see me as like, I don't, you know, why don't you have these goals and why are you striving for this or why are you doing, it's like, there's no desire. It doesn't mean that I, there's nothing, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with me. It's just that I choose to not be part of that anymore. I choose to not be, I choose to not, not let my mind control what I do. I just let it do itself. I just let it do its own thing. But And it works, right? <laughs> of course it works. When I don't think about things and I just, there's just this like constant flow. I'm just in that free flow state. It's, it's wonderful. It's because it's positive. It's giving, it's compassionate. It's like, that's all I know anymore. <laughs> yeah. And it's fresh also. I feel sometimes it's, it's always fresh. Beautiful. There's no, it's kind of, it's just, out, it's just outward, you know, I try not to, I try not to bring th so much things in. It just I wanted things just coming out. I think this is the part of this just part of me is just energy coming out. I don't let things control my thought processes. I don't let things come in. I don't let things. I'm kind of like a wall, <laughs> but a river at the same time. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I've but been the, playing that, around with those, <clears throat> those experiences definitely changed me. Definitely meditation changed, did a lot for me. Um, I think ayahuasca changed me. I think be, before I did ayahuasca, like I was already practicing meditation. That was the biggest shift in my whole life was when I did the pasta. Like I didn't think that I would, if I didn't know I would experience something like that. I didn't know that the, the I didn't understand really what the ego was, but I definitely experienced it or it disappearing for a short moment. <laughs> I just like totally, under, totally understanding or totally ex- understanding through experience, direct experience, like what all this pain was, what suffering meant, you know, just having and previously having no understanding about where this, where this lineage was from. It's like, this is all just fucking created in my brain. Everything. Pain, emotions, trauma, all, all this stuff, it's just, it's all in here. And when a moment, when, when that can disappear and you can like let those, you know, the reins of all the, you can just let it all go. It's. Well, look, this is the best way I looked at, I looked at this. It's not really like uh, thoughts or emotions or it's coming into you or whatever, but it's more like this, like just try to like sense like your face and see how it's like uh, doing like a, a grimace or like a uh, sometimes you feel like this little like contraction no and it's like sometimes it's like you're making a face mm. you're constantly making a face oh. without without realizing that and this is the and then if you try to relax that face completely i don't know but this is what it's like constantly i try to remind myself because i see how uh, it's doing its face <laughs> face of the ego it's like oh it's doing it's doing its contracted face it's it's just like you know it could be little it could be very little it could be uh wherever you want it to be it's very subtle but it's this constant contraction everywhere Mm. and when you go to bed you have the same feeling like it's just merging back with everything Mm. yeah but uh yeah this is uh it's more how I see it now. Uh, the ego is not like a bundle of thoughts. This is not how I see it anymore. I see it more as it's not something abstract. It's got nothing to do with past and future, the ego. It's completely energetic. It's like energy. It's just energy. It yeah. is a pure, it's this contraction. That's why when we meditate or we, we say, oh, you're going to experience Banda or you're going to hurt or you're going to every med- every experiences i feel of uh, i mean yo- yoga is always has to do with the body because i think the idea is for people to stop being in the mind and really realize that truth is energetic it's not at all it's not like a, a mind thing and you know when we say body when we mean body we this is the mind speaking saying this is body when we yeah, yeah. need hand, this is hand. But body is also mind. So yeah, really, yeah. the new thing is this: it's energetic. I think that's it. Combining the two, yeah, yeah. But nothing is separate because it's it's just this. Uh, every, basically, when I say it, it's contracted here, I don't mean it's contracted energy here. It's also contracted energy here. It's also contracted energy here it's just everywhere it's it's contraction it's survival it's just like trying to like uh it it is a big thing doing this thing (laughs) it's not even a thing it's just like whatever it appears like that it's hard to kind of explain and to express sometimes Mm. yeah you cannot talk about it yeah but it's talking oh if it is <laughs> I feel like this is it. This is the the resume like of what you're just saying. Like a baby trying to communicate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, this is cool because, like, even babies, like, I don't have ba- I don't have kids, so I don't know how tough it must be for parents, but for for apparent parents, but like, no one has a father nor a mother. It's just inert energy contracted and it's just like when you have a father 
an apparent father that's looking at the, the kid that's five years old, let's say, or six years old. Usually parents look down at their kids, like, like those little midgets, they don't have as much experience of the present now than me. How wrong is that? It's so wrong. I know. It's totally opposite. That yeah. child is so upset. That child, that child just had the most incredible DMT experience of his life. Yeah. <laughs> and then the whole rest of it's like, oh, what happened? <laughs> what, happened? what happened? Oh, that was something happened a really long time ago that I remember. Oh, and then it takes you like 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years to go, oh. So that's, that's, the par- that's, par- that's the parallel realities maybe right there. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, those, those, yeah. Those moments in your life, you know, near-death experience or psychedelics or, you know, being born. Some well, of the most profound. Uh, do you have photos of you when you were younger? Because I, I think there's like photos of me like downstairs. Uh, I, and what- somewhere, yeah. When I look at my photos of like when I was five years old, to me today, it starts, it's really weird and weird and weird because I keep seeing this kid that's just dead for a long time. <laughs> it's still on the wall. It's like, why? Why would we do this thing? We're just like crazy. Mem- <laughs> yeah. Like that child is dead. You mean that memory is dead? That a long time ago. Moment, time is dead. Mm. But it's I don't creepy. have so many photos here because I, they're all mostly back at home. But. but it's creepy, I feel. The ego is creepy when it does those things, you know, like trying to, like, I want to hold on to, like, <laughs> it's so creepy. It's like, but it's the, it's the norm. Mm. <laughs> right. Yeah, so parallel worlds. And, and I would, what, do, what are your thoughts on it? What are your thoughts about that as a, as a concept or? I did believe, I, I mean, when I started the, the ayahuasca and all that, I really did believe that uh, there is possibility to always be on those, uh, those feelings or those realities, visions. So this is, this is the closest I got, I think. After that, I think I've got, um, I read so many like uh, scriptures also, and like there's some scriptures and some books that mention like, you know, there was a conversation with God and then there's some yeah. people talking like, you know, Abraham and some channeling and all that. And, um, and then Ram Dass just like Ram Dass just made it, made the top of my list because <laughs> at least, at least he knew how to like, just be funny with it and not be so serious with it. But the people who are like a little too much in parallel realities that in my oh. opinion is just it just comes down to that it's just like it's for entertainment only uh, and uh and we must be careful not taking things too seriously i think yeah uh, well i don't know either you know it's just like this is stupid of me to say that too it's just that everything is stupid anyway so you can take everything as serious it's up to you um, but when we think when we think about parallel dimensions, like are we also talking about like parallel universes, or are we just actually just talking about the fact that it's possible to perceive a lot more, you know, to have access to all these doors of perception, or however you want to call it? Do you realize that the mind has been dreaming billions of years? This is quite a lot already. <laughs> and the, the worst, in the, the, we, we still try to remember most of it. We still have it. All of us has to say all the same past. Yeah. And we just- All, of, it is, all of it's there. It's like, it's, everything is there. It's, um, it's all there. It's all there. I think that's, I think that's what, I, th- I think psychedelics and even just other experiences just allow, allow us to see of what's really there, you know? this normal waking moment right now we have a certain accessibility to so much but i think the mind is what's going on in the brain we don't really like biologically chemically we don't have such greater access i think that's what's interesting about psychedelics is we can allows us to see more or have more information or you know that we can't normally see right now 
Yeah, that's quite interesting what you said because yeah, that's like uh, people. Yeah, I mean, yeah, people who take yeah. it psychedelic might think I'm hallucinating, like oh, this you know that's there yeah. and. Uh, but actually, no. Maybe it is there. It's just we're so we're not used to seeing it like that. Yeah. It's like, like show us the infinite possibilities of what there is. And totally. I think. But after that, you know, like you have a sense that I think is undervalued. That everybody just like keeps undervaluing. It's like, oh, I want to see every colors between red and red. But you know you have this mind and that's like the, the the highest sense of all it creates those realities uh and that's what's governing all of the senses you know what i mean in a way i don't want to say it's governing but uh yeah so what you mean is potentially if our sense were oh well, yeah more developed we would see more but i also feel like restriction allows us to have this desire to want more okay in a way so it's just like uh it's the limitations is what allows us to have this desire Abs absolutely that's I it totally agree. if we had everything we would be bored no we wouldn't exist probably actually but if we were all, but if we were always in that DMT experience, if we were always in that total immersion of however which you want to call are, it, which you are right now, <laughs> <laughs> do you see how the mind is just trying to like tell itself? I know, it's, not. It's, like, it's not as it's not like this. It's not like that. It's not like this. It's not like the other experience. It's not like you know, colors and this and this and this. And it's not a sensation. It's not yeah. Yeah, it's interesting to think about like that. We just we just caught the mind right there trying to do its thing. It's yeah, beautiful. yeah. But yeah. no, it's interesting. Yeah, it's true. If we we have those those limitations that allow, make us want more, I guess. But maybe that's because of our this conditioning and the fact that we've seen it before. We've had an experience before like when we're born they were like oh what what maybe so being born was the bet was the mistake <laughs> ah, that's yeah that's true being born was like oh okay fuck now i've had the most amazing experience of my life um well yeah but you but have it every, mo every morning you got it too yeah well that's true you, every night you go to bed you're just like yes just, i'm going back <laughs> i like i like to your post it was like what is that about every every day we awake or something? Awakening is every morning. Every moment, yeah, every, it's true. No, every just, morning. About yeah, every moment too. It's just uh, we just wake up in a different way, in a different capacity. Yeah, or with a different, and like, you no, know? close your eyes, waking up again. Every breath you're waking up again. I don't know. And why would you want to be more awake than you already are? Like, how more awake do you want to be? Aren't yeah. you awake enough? You know, that's the thing. I. Uh, what makes you not awake do you know like but this is the this is the run like you know even when we're speaking with like detox people or even like i'm eating a lot of fruits you know and uh, uh and i'm doing this and i'm doing that whatever i do i do it but i am today i don't want to pretend and tell people what i do makes me feel so much more alive than you you should do that like, oh. i don't want to do that this does not no. this not feel right to me, if you want to eat some meat, just eat some meat. But you're not going to be more alive with meat or if you just don't eat any food at all. So that goes back to the Brazilian journey. It's quite difficult to say, oh, because you're not eating, uh, then you're more alive. Yeah. Because birth and death are just the same thing. This is the problem. It's just like, uh, yeah, yeah. It's complicated, but I don't think you're more alive because no one is alive. <laughs> why is it? Why is there so much like focus on you know like people offering so many practices and becoming this person or becoming more alive and awaken to your true self? And it's so it's so dense. There's so many people thinking that they're gurus and want to offer this and 
go and search for this and this and this and this and this. Like the list is so long. It's like, it's suddenly you're like, well, maybe I am nothing. You know, maybe it's- but wait, <laughs> but- this is the problem I have. And I can't, do, I can't do anything about it. Like, look, even this book that we just did, and even the retreat, like, I, as I was writing, like, uh, the, the sad song just for fun, I was just like, I don't know, but this is the pattern. You can't escape the pattern. It's like you, 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 you people want to be teachers. People want to be students. It's just like almost like impossible to, but that doesn't change anything. The teacher is the student. The student is the teacher. That, that just doesn't change anything. It's just energy. Just like, yeah. Dying itself. But you mentioned the other day, like this retreat, it's a retreat, but it serves nothing. What did you say? <laughs> I know. And then I was like, ah. Oh. Maybe this I, is I not good promotion. That. No one's gonna want to buy a ticket for something. I know. That means nothing. <laughs> I know, but at the same time, you know, this is the problem I'm having. Is like a guru who is telling you you need to practice this, and 20 years after you meditate, you will really achieve enlightenment. That's bullshit. It is bullshit. I totally agree. <laughs> it's just like, and honestly, this is what people want to hear too. Not people, but the ego. <laughs> Do this, do that, and you'll be enlightened. No, you you already are enlightened. You've been enlightened. Look at Vipassana. Born. And Vipassana, did you speak with some some people that I spoke to? And I, was, I was just like so shocked. This is why I kind of stopped being at the, the center sometimes. I was just like, whoa, whoa, it's going too far. Like some people are really believing that Buddha is coming back. And uh and this and this and that. And they believe in the whole story of oh, now it's gonna take me at least a few lives before I can really and I'm just like, no way. It's, what's happening why why a particular buddha yeah i think that's weird yeah. isn't it? it's just a, it's just like an it's it's also just like a archetype no isn't buddha just an archetype buddha's buddha just means to be enlightened to remember i guess it doesn't mean he's coming back in what form but isn't he the concept of enlightenment and compassion everywhere so He's already here. He never left. Do you know? I, I, oh, yeah. <laughs> anyways. That's cute. We're so cute. <laughs> but this is nice because like ah, you do nothing. Can't escape it. <laughs> Even when you have discussions that are not about that with uh, with others. It's still the same thing. Oh. But I mean, the retreats are going to be interesting. I think they're a great idea. It just You have to kind of set, the hard thing is to set a container. You know, you have to explain what it is, what it's going to do. But it's like, at the same time, everyone's kind of just got to figure it out for themselves. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's no you right know way. There's no wrong way. It's just like, there's so many options and so many methods. You just really need to listen to yourself. And, and I don't know. How was, this, how was the Zoom meeting yesterday with some of the people? That was great. Okay. I didn't say that it was going to be useless. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'll say it on the seventh day. <laughs> I'm not going to say it on the first, but I'll no, say it. no. No, but I am, uh, you know, I'm really like right now in me, I'm just, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Am I going to be able to like push them to the other side? Or do I really have to keep them thinking that there is really the self that knows everything and is here and you are the self, you know? Like basically seeking enlightenment is just like making the ego, wow, I yeah. have wisdom about everything. And then and two not, minutes, as two much minutes knowledge, later, bro. Knowledge is possible. And then... <laughs> so the reality is just like, basically, I, I think I want to like help people kind of like uh, observe less things. Yeah. Uh, but, if, but the thing is, the less you observe, the more you have the feeling of like, oh, I understand the purity. That's, and, and, then, and then the sixth day, I really have, I would love to be honest and just say, okay, well, I like the way you've structured it. I think it's good. Yeah. Yeah. I should, I should send you the, the, the writings, but then ah, yeah. I think people will have a nice day, the sixth day, but 
I think what's going to happen is going to be a lot of like bubbling and like, you know, like it's going to be like, ah, I came for nothing. Ah. Yeah, I'm sick of fruit. I'm sick of dieting. I just want to go back to, but why did you come here? Oh, God. Yeah. No, it'll be good. There'll be a lot of a lot of things coming up, but that's why I think some of the practices that we do are going to be really important. Yeah, but I think what should be honest is just like even if you understand that okay, there's nothing and uh, there's nobody here really. Uh, it, there's still yoga happening. There's still practices happening. There's still meditation happening. Like even if like I, I mean, I personally don't feel as I'm doing them with intention and i'm getting somewhere like i'm not doing them getting somewhere it's just what's happening like yeah. when when meditation happens it just happens yeah. and uh i i don't say that i have goals to meditate every hour uh, every every uh, day two or three hours but when i when it happens it happens yeah and, uh, it's like you're just constantly meditating you're constantly yeah. doing you're constantly just like you're constantly breathing they're just all become autonomous i guess yeah so this is hopefully what yeah the message they will receive from the retreat and some egos will not see it that way and we can't do anything about it and uh, i think you saw the message there's someone like on the chat on whatsapp that says that it's too buddhist i did you can't, I did. You can't help <laughs> no i think this is an unusual comment but okay that she didn't yeah. want to Hey, oh, she didn't want to give money for the book. I was like, no, no, I think she did, but I don't know. But uh, yeah, okay, it's just not. Well, but that was a good uh, conversation. That was interesting. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we have a long life ahead. <laughs> you know, I one thing never gonna I, I It's not like I. I've said this to my dad in one day, but like uh would you rather you know like live 150 years looking for the right prescription drug or to feel good or would you rather live like just one month but completely uh not there you know like just in what in what's happening completely in what's happening never uh, just here you know and honestly, I spent four or five years for me now that I'm just like uh, really like not uh, no goals, no agendas, no whatever, no no life. And it feels like it's been a long, long time. <laughs> <laughs> like it's life is long. Like, it is long. You, yeah. When you're like there, it's just like, okay. Mm. Apparently it's not really like. What did your dad say? What was his response? No, but the same as like some people working, uh, you know, 60 years in a job would say, it's just like, usually when you get to like a certain age, you finally can believe that you're going to be, ah, and you couldn't do it before, you know, it's like, I couldn't do ah, before. Yeah. So whatever. But then once you start like uh, dropping your job, you just realize nothing has changed. So. <clears throat> it's quite mm. but yeah nope. with this covid stuff right now for me i would rather that all of us as a population that's lived like 40 years like in the past you know 40 or 50 years but really like alive sure. rather than 120 like ghosts you know yeah i agree <laughs> anyway this little rent of the ego right now it serves no purpose <laughs> yeah i definitely don't like to go slower <laughs> yeah. <sighs> that was a good chat i think it's 